Welcome to the Incite My Life channel. Here we are again with the essentials of exam P. In particular, I want to cover the basics of combinatorics. So, what in the world is combinatorics? Well, it's knowing how to count outcomes at its basic, most core aspect. And combinatorics is a very broad field. I mean, there's a lot of different parts, but as far as exam P is concerned, it really is going to boil down into these two things. Permutations, which is the ways of arranging something, and combinations, which is the ways of choosing something. I'm going to get into more clarity coming up. So with permutations, a key thing to know is arrangements. So we have this n with an exclamation point, and I have the formula written out there. That exclamation point stands for factorial, and it implies arrangements. How many ways can you arrange objects? So say, for instance, I have these three smiley faces, and I want to know how many ways can I arrange three smiley faces? Well, for my first object that I choose, I have three choices of smiley faces. For the first, you know, if I was going to put them in an order, I have three choices for the first one. I have the blue, the yellow, and the green. So out of these three, let's say I choose blue. So if I choose the blue face, now there are only two choices left over because I can't repeat. So now I have the yellow and the green face to choose. And if I so happen to choose the yellow face, then that leaves me with only one choice, which is the green face. So the way we count up the arrangements then is by multiplying the amount of choices in each step. So that would be three times two times one gives us six. So that's six total arrangements. And that's represented in this chart that I've put next to the smiley faces. So the formula for permutation itself is given above. It's n factorial over n minus r factorial. So n represents your total group size, and r represents the subgroup size. So in the example below, with the smiley faces, we have 3. And we were choosing 3. How many ways can we arrange 3? So that would be. Uh, n would be 3, and the subgroup would also be 3. So if you put that into the formula above, it will come out to be 6. And you might notice that you get 0 factorial. Well, 0 factorial is just 1. So we continue on now to advanced permutations. So let's say that you go to the grocery store, and you're going into the 15 item or fewer checkout line, and your cart has exactly 15 items. How many ways can you arrange five of them on the conveyor belt? And believe it or not, there are actually 360,360 different ways to arrange those objects on the conveyor belt. And that's given by the formula above there. So that seems like quite a bit, right? And it is. And the reason being here is because we are arranging 15 items, which is a lot. Now, intuitively, because I know, you know, it's formulas, it's like, yeah, you can memorize them, but I like to create a little, you know, the little thing that makes it easier to link into reality in a sense, you know, to make it not so abstract. So the way I think of it is you have your total permutations, okay, you have your 15 items in that basket. So there's 15 factorial ways of arranging that, which is, you know, a ton. But then we're taking away the unnecessary permutations. So if you're only looking at five items, then take away five out of your total and you're taking out of that permutation 10 factorial. So in other words, you know, well actually it'd just be better if I showed you. I know it's kind of, it's wordy to just say it. So let me show you. So let's say we have the letters of the word Mississippi, okay? And I want to know how many ways are there to arrange the letters in the word Mississippi? Well, from following what we just did, there's 11 letters. So there should be 11 factorial arrangements. However, notice this. I have Mississippi and Mississippi, but I have the S's colored. And the reason I have them colored is because I'm showing you that if I switch those the places of those S's where I have the blue where the red was and the red where the blue was, 
the word Mississippi hasn't changed. It's still Mississippi. So we have to take into account that this is not a distinct arrangement, and we are looking for distinct arrangements, arrangements that are, you know, actually different. So in order to to find the distinct arrangements, we have to take out the letters that are repetitive. So we have 11 factorial total arrangements, and we're going to divide out the four P's, the four I, or I'm sorry, the four I's, the four S's, and the two P's, and all the ways that you can arrange those. So hence, you see we have 11 factorial over 4 factorial times 4 factorial times 2 factorial. So those represent those repetitive letters. So, you know, this is kind of where the intuitive sense of permutations helps. Um, and I find it helpful because, you know, we can kind of draw that connection. And this type of question, it, it comes up every once in a while. I, you know, for example, you might see a question about um, a lottery, like arranging numbers in the lottery or setting a password or some type of arrangement question. It does come up every once in a while. So it's good to know. Now we want to move on to combinations. So like I said, combinations are ways of choosing something. So the formula itself is very similar to permutations, but we have the additional r factorial on the outside of our n minus r factorial. So let's take a look at this question. You have 10 fighters. How many ways are there to choose two of them? So plugging that directly into our formula, we find that we have exactly 45 pairings. So again, it's very abstract you know, plugging it into a formula and all of that. So let's try and relate it back to permutations. Let's take a simpler combination. Let's say we just wanted to do three choose two. So if I was gonna do that and plug that directly into the formula, I'd have three factorial over two factorial, one factorial. So I should get three, right? So if I have three items, okay, these are the arrangements of three items. So you notice there are six different groups of three here. Now I'm choosing two, or I'm choosing groups of two. So I'm going to cross out um, a pair from each triplet, okay, representing the arrangements of two items. So I put slashes through those showing that I don't want the pairs. So if I slash all of those out and I put, to, put into pairs the remaining um, balls that we have here, then I would have only three pairs that I can choose from. And the order doesn't matter because I'm looking at three pairs, regardless of its, like for the first one, it's blue and gray. It doesn't matter if it's gray or blue, it's still a pair. So now we move on into the advanced combination. And the traditional type of advanced questions are regarding stars and bars or balls and baskets. Those are usually the, the ones that they start out with. So the question usually goes like this. How many ways are there to arrange n identical balls between k baskets? So what do you think for arranging two balls, two identical balls into two baskets? So the formula for that just boils down to a single formula, which is n plus k minus 1 over n. So n is your objects. So if I take the the picture okay where we have two identical balls and two baskets and I just plug in those values into our formula you'll see that we should get three ways of arranging two balls into two baskets and I've put that for you here so you could put two into one basket two into the other basket or you can split them between both baskets so the importance of these uh, types of questions is that or these types of um, formulas of combination and permutation is that they come up on sections one and two of the syllabus. So they're part of the hypergeometric distribution, the binomial distribution, the negative binomial distribution, and questions involving counting. So it is important. And of course, you know, exam P is spread out all over the place. You know, there's not really one thing that you can study and get an A on, or an A, I'm sorry, and get a 10, you know, your top score. You know, it's kind of all spread out. So you need to know combinatorics and then all these other things. But hey, let's just take it piece by piece, right? It's more daunting when you look at the bigger picture. Let's actually just think about doing this for right now. So 
uh, I'm going to keep developing on this series um, and just keep putting out the different aspects of exam P that you need to know. And I'm also going to keep doing more uh, practice questions as I post up these videos. So for now, I just want to say fantastic job. I'm so glad that you made it this far. You're a trooper, a champ. Good job. You know, seriously, it's a lot of, it's a ton of stuff to remember. It's really, you know, it can really make you want to bang your head into the wall. I know I felt like that. And you know what? Just keep going, you know, and like and subscribe. You know, if you really like what I'm trying to do, then, you know, show me, please. You know, I, I love the support that I, I get and it really makes me feel good and it really inspires me to keep going. And so my goal for you guys is to put up a ton of free resources for you to learn about exam P. And free because I know how expensive that stuff can get you know it's three hundred dollars for the exam I mean in America it's three hundred dollars and then on top of the you know the study materials it's like another three hundred and then if you don't pass then it's another three hundred and you're spending like a thousand dollars already you know what I want to make it free you know I want to make the information free to, for you guys to learn and to you know just dive into so like and subscribe and I want you to take a look at this question. Out of all the costly SOA exam study resources, how many ways are there of choosing the completely free Insight My Life resource? So using your combination and permutation formulas, you might say that there is exactly one way to choose. So thank you for stopping by everybody.